Hi guys, this is Mike. In this ZBrush tutorial, I'm gonna go over primitives. We're gonna go over each of the individual primitives that we have in ZBrush. We're gonna talk about initialize and be able to change the geometry within each of these primitives. I'm gonna go over sphere, cube, cylinder, cone, ring, plane, circle, arrow 3D, spiral, helix, gear, terrain, and sweep profile. These are gonna be the basics that you can use when you start sculpting. Now I'm gonna show you the primitives that we have here in ZBrush in order to give you a basis for your sculpting. So if we come over here to the tool palette and we click on the tool, we have this window that pops up that has all the primitives that we have here. So we're gonna start off with the Sphere 3D. Click and drag within your canvas and then hold down Shift to snap this alignment to up straight up and down. And now we're gonna make it editable. We'll go over here to click on this button or T on your keyboard. Now if we go down here to our tool palette, we'll see initialize. Click on initialize and you'll notice that we have a few options to change the geometry of this 3D sphere. Now, Almost all the primitives have this similar options, such as line X, line Y, and a line Z. And we also have a uh, lines that we can bring bring up to show the lines of our geometry. So I'm going to bring this back to a line Y. Now we have. One, uh, we can change the size in the X, and now flatten that out. And we can change the size in the Y, and you can't really see it from this angle, so I'm just gonna rotate around a little bit. And you can see that. Now we also have size in the Z, which will flatten it up, uh, flatten it down uh, from the top down and we have coverage now if I click and use this slider you can see let me rotate this around a bit you can see how this has uh, a shape that goes all the way around and you can also type in option uh, type in a value for each of these options so if I put in 180 it will be 180 degree coverage for this sphere. I'm gonna bring this back up all the way. And we also have H divide and V divide, horizontal and vertical. And those are the lines that you can see if I increase, we, we get more resolution. And if I bring it down, we have less. Same thing for the vertical divide. And we can also type in a value for that as well. So moving on, I'll go to Cube 3D. And you can see the lines that we have here. You can also see sort of a weird perspective. We can change perspective and that from with this button over here. And that will make it look a little bit better. And same as before, we have a uh, line X, Y, and Z. And we can change the size. I won't go over the same thing for each one of these. Just know that we have these options here for each one of the primitives for changing the size. Now for this one, we have side count. So we can increase that from a cube into another shape. And we can bring this all the way up. We also have twist. I'm gonna bring this back down to four. We also have twist. And we can increase the resolution on that, which the H and V divide. Now we have cylinder 3D. And the same alignment and size. But we also have inner radius which can create a tube. 
Uh, you can see that on both sides. And the various divisions. And we have taper top. And now taper your cylinder. We also have a cone 3D. The same options, but we here we have an inner radius. This will become more apparent as we drop down the taper top. Now you can see the uh, an opening on both ends, and we can continue to adjust that with the inner radius and the taper top. So it gives you a few different options. We also have ring 3D with all our alignment. And uh, for this, we have a radius that will allow us to increase the thickness or thinness of this ring, as well as coverage, similar to what we had with the sphere. Could be a handle or a basis of the beginning of a handle. Uh, we have scale, which you can see we can scale that in a different way. Twist. And our subdivisions. or not subdivisions, but our uh, divide for our for geometry. And we have twist, which rotates the lines. Now we have a uh, sweep profile 3D, and this one's pretty interesting. Uh, we have the same alignment, but we also have a spline, which we can adjust visually within this box here and we can move this line as well this point and this will give us a different shape for our 3d and we also have a <clears throat> excuse me we have a few different options by using these sliders so we can do the same basic thing uh, visually that we did with our spline and you can see we have a few different options here that you might need, uh, as well as being able to save, reset, and um, make adjustments, uh, load. So we have a few different options here with this particular primitive. And we also have a similar uh, options here. Let me go back and reset. Um, we also have, um, oh, um, and the, we also have the same options here as the other, the subdivision. So let me go to Terrain 3D. And same as before, we have uh, similar options. But here we also have uh, some ability to change the profile as before, you can see how we can adjust this spline. So you can see we have a, a few different options. Let me close this one. And we have the H profile. You can see how that changes the options as well, or changes the shape as well. Next, we'll move on to the plane 3D, which is uh, your basic plane, pretty self-explanatory. And, excuse me, we also have a circle 3D as well. And this is similar to what we had with the sphere, we have a coverage, we have our uh, radius, 
inner radius and outer radius. We also have arrow. And you can see that we have a few different options with this one as well. And you're gonna experiment with some of these different options that we have that might be useful for your, um, your 3D models. Next, we have a polymesh 3D. We also have spiral 3D. And you can see the different options that we have here. So there are many different objects that you can start using for your, for your models. This could be a, a horn for a ram or some type of creature. And you can see all the different options that we have here. Could be a hard surface for a corkscrew. So you can definitely use the primitives that will help you, uh, give you a basis for your models and also being able to work with them individually or together. And I believe I looked at all of them except for, oh, uh, the uh, Helix 3D and we'll get into the gear. So we have this option as well. There's some really fun and interesting pr primitives that we have here. Um, that are different than we have in Cinema 4D. And you can see these splines that you can start working with. Let me close that. And we have our normal subdivision and uh, divisions that we have here for the, each of the lines. And now I want to get to gear, which is uh, gear 3D, which is has a bunch of different options. You can see we can you can make some pretty complex shapes. Uh, let me rotate this around a bit. the width, the radius, inner radius, uh, skew, tilt, which you can see makes some pretty interesting shapes. And we have the outer radius. So you can definitely make uh, some pretty imaginative hard surface as well as uh, some interesting shapes. And we have our uh, divisions down here. And I believe that was the last one that I wanted to go over. So you can see that we have some pretty interesting ways to start our, our models within ZBrush. And we have lots of different options in which to start with the very basics, start and using the initialized uh, palette where we can change the geometry to suit our needs. Now, once you get to this point where you like the shape that you want, uh, at that point, you would go to make polygon mesh uh, 3D in order to start actually sculpting and shaping this model with uh, the various brushes that we have here within ZBrush. I put a link in the description to download project files. You can also go to astronomic3d.com to download project files from this tutorial and all the tutorials that I've made so far. Thanks for watching.